Hi, I'm David Bell. Welcome to this episode of Far Country Tall Tales and True. Ever been to Moraki? It's a magnificent beach, almost totally deserted, even when there's a couple of busloads of tourists at the little restaurant that leads down to the Moraki boulders. It's a huge beach, and the boulders are only a very small part of it. So happens I was there one day and saw three guys having a heated discussion over those boulders. Turned out one of them was dressed in medieval church clothes and said his name was Thomas Aquinas. The others called him St. Thomas for some reason. The second guy was dressed as a great Māori chief and he said his name was Tyro. The others said he had fought Honihiki in the musket wars. The last of the trio was a 20th century American by the name of Stephen J. Gould. The other two said of him he was a scientist of international repute. They were all having a great to-do over these boulders. So let's begin with the scientist. He's confronted with this beach of raw stark beauty, wild and exposed, and on it are these strange geological formations. His instinct, his very being as a scientist, demands an explanation. How did this come to be? What processes have happened that gives rise to these boulders? The scientific version, the voice of geology speaks. The Moraki boulders consist mainly of carbonate of lime, silica, alumina and peroxide of iron. They are about 60 million years old and just for the sake of comparison, the formation of New Zealand itself from Gondwana land is say 680 million years ago. That's why Stephen Jay Gould's so enthusiastic about the science of geology. It moves our timescale beyond the limitations of just human thinking. He calls geology the emergence of a sense of deep time. So the scientist in our scene looks at the boulders and thinks, how did they come about? But Tyro sees the Moraki boulders quite differently. In them, there's the answer to the question of his identity, Maori legend version. And how important this is, according to Maori folklore, te kai food, Pinaki baskets were washed ashore at Maoraki from the canoe Arai Uru. Now this canoe was wrecked off the coast on a voyage south in search of the precious stone Punamu, green stone, jade. These boulders remind him of his family relationships. Tairo measures the passage of time by reciting his whakapapa ancestry. He marches into the future, into time itself, not by facing it and walking into it, not at all. He approaches time itself by turning to face the past and by embracing the time's past, walks backward, always backward into the future. The theologian's version. St. Thomas Aquinas stands before the Moraki boulders and doesn't ask how did these come to be, as Stephen J. Gould did. He's not interested in how. In the same way, he doesn't ask, who am I? St. Thomas Aquinas asks instead, what's the significance of these boulders in relation to God? means by that what's their ultimate meaning beyond the ordinary world of people and objects. Aquinas asks, how can the eternal be present in the now? How can all of time come to a single focus in a single instant? How is God present in the past and the present and the future in the meaning of these boulders? So three people from different times, different cultures, inevitably read something different out of the Moraki boulders. Yet there is a something in common, but it's far beyond the commonplace. Time, you see, is always the common thread. Most people don't think too much about time and its nature. They say time flies, that's true. Carpe diem, seize the moment. But to walk on the Moraki beach and stand for a while among the boulders and hear the roar of the sea, to see those wild blue stormy skies of the south and feel the wind on your face is to step for a moment into eternity for a fleeting instant from the gifts of the boulders into the presence of the giver. It's to give thanks, it's to be cleansed and renewed for an instant. It's enough to last a lifetime. Never ran across those guys on Moraki after that. Used to stop there every time, every time I drove from Timaru to Dunedin looking for them. I would have liked to listen to them just one more time. Subscribe to the channel, purple yellow button below right if you're watching on YouTube, and like the page if you're watching on Facebook to get notification of more videos like this. 
See you next week, same time, and thanks for watching.